Hey, good morning. Welcome to Leaf Point Church. You guys ready to worship? Let's stand to our feet. God is forever worthy. Here we go. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. You sing. His love endures forever. For He's good. He is above all things. You say.
I love to sing songs that are uh, based off the Psalms, and this is one um, uh, we wrote called Known by the Father, and um, we don't really know how the Psalms sound that David wrote, but um, this is what I think this one went. of singing we just worship you for you are holy and worthy and glorified God um, even just praying now I'm just recounting all the ways that you've blessed me and all the ways that you've been faithful throughout my life and um, where can we go from your presence or flee from your spirit 
as you find us everywhere we are, Lord. You continuously chase after us, and we thank you for that, Lord. And um, so uh, we just start the service off the right way and worship to you, Lord, and that we, um, we don't make this about ourselves. And uh, we just want to hear from you and hear your voice, Lord, because uh, your voice is the one that we need to hear. So we worship you. We praise you. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice and your mercies that are new every morning, including this morning. We worship and praise you, Jesus. Name. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Lake Point Church. My name is River Brandon, and this is my wife, Jameson, and we'll be your host for today's service. Uh, if you are a guest here today, we invite you to fill out a connection card, which is located in the seat pocket in front of you. Uh, you can fill out and provide that information and then drop it in the offering box as you leave today. Uh, another way you can connect is via the QR code located on the bulletin uh, that you received as you entered service today. Uh, and if you are watching online, you can go to www.lakepoint.com forward slash connect and it will take you to our online connection platform uh, now Jameson has some information she'd like to share good morning everyone our first announcement is next Sunday December 4th is our um, ladies Christmas fellowship party that is going to be at the ministry center at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, don't forget to bring a $10 gift for the gift exchange if you are coming to that as well that's any ladies, that's members, or has been visiting us. Um, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. And then Mission Christmas is um, Saturday, December 10th, and that is going to be at Lake Point Station. We still need volunteers for that. This is a really big um, community outreach for us to um, just help out the community with Christmas. Um, if you're interested in volunteering or helping out in any way, whether you want to be at Lake Point and be playing with the kids or you want to go shopping with the parents, at Walmart. Um, you can text uh, Christmas to 833-429-6868 and it will send you a link to um, sign up and volunteer for that. And our last thing next Sunday is breakfast um, Sunday since it is the first Sunday of December. So next Sunday that starts at 1030. Bring something good to eat to share with everybody. Uh, we're glad you're all here this morning and we invite you to stand and greet those around you. All right, well, uh, I know you just sat down, and I hate to be this guy, but can you actually stand up? Because we are going to, uh, we're going to worship one more time.
kidding me? I've only been here for a short time, but man, that's just, that is so awesome. Uh, for 10 years, um, God's been faithful um, to this body, and uh, we're thankful for that for 10 years. Uh, let's pray before we start going. Father God, we do give you thanks and praise for today. Thank you, Lord, that we can come here and worship you. Thank you, Lord, that we can do it boldly and freely. Holy Spirit, be with each of us now. As you laid upon me, Holy Spirit, what to, what to teach today, the message. Holy Spirit, empty our minds and our thoughts of this world. And that we can listen to what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be here. It was an interesting week. I know some of you saw uh, both of my sons here with Diane. Um, you know, we, had, we did a move. We moved our older son down to Georgia, amen. So it's good to know, happy mama. But an interesting thing happened on a taxi, taxi ride from Minneapolis to the U-Haul place. I lost my phone. I totally lost it. And I knew what started the message I was going to preach today, right? And like, I'm thinking, in the, I'm thinking in the U-Haul, of course, you get a little mad. I don't know how mad I got, Zachary would know. But, you know, I'm like, I was in the U-Haul. I'm like, you know what? 
I have nothing to worry about. Why am I worried? It's just a phone, right? And I was thinking about the message, and I finished it up this week. But we serve a faithful God. He will get us through things in life, no matter what the situation is. And we still have atlases in this world, do we not? We don't need a GPS anymore, even though I can make it down here without, without GPS. But open up your Bibles or whatever um, tools you have to Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 3. Now, the book of Hebrews is my second favorite book in the Bible. The first one is Ephesians. And I've been really growing and liking the book of Hebrews. So we're going to read Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen to that. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. A couple questions I have for you this morning. How is your faith right now at this present time? How is it? Is it going really good? Is it good? Is it bad? Or is it ugly right now? Be honest with yourself. I was honest with me as I was driving down. I think we all have a spiritual high sometimes. Do we agree with that, right? You come to Sunday, you come to worship, you go to a conference or whatever, and you're on that spiritual high. But then Monday morning hits and what happens? You kind of crash, right? You're wiped out physically. You're wiped out mentally and spiritually. You're low on gas. That's reality that you and I live on. That's just the way we are made. I know about you, but when I was helping out with the youth group many years ago, I don't know how I did it. I mean, Friday morning to Sunday night, you were on the run, you were going, you were worshiping, you were making sure the kids were alive, you were making sure that they weren't lost. Monday morning came, that was it. You were spent. But I come to realize there's something more important than at that time. You see, I'm going to, a little introduction here, and we talked about holy God when we were worshiping. We do have to really understand that we serve a holy God who deserves all the glory of the whole world. He deserves it. He created us. He created the world. He deserves all the glory. We serve a God who is a just God. Sometimes we see that, okay, God shouldn't do that. Why does he do that? Because he is just. We serve a God who is a righteous God. We serve a God who is a loving, loving God. Amen. We are to strive for holy living because God is holy. We fail, yes. You see, living out the Christian faith is a race. It is an endurance. Just like any race or marathon, you have to have endurance. You just have to. Living out the Christian faith does have its trials. We still sin and we need help. At times, living out the Christian faith seems what? Hopeless. Draining and leaving us groaning, groaning in our sin. But today, yes, we are going to talk a little bit about sin because the scripture I have chosen talks about it. And that's reality that we live in. But there is hope we're going to see in, this, in these passages. Jonathan Edwards said, Any sin is more or less heinous depending upon the honor and majesty of the one whom we had offended. Since God is of infinite honor, infinite majesty, and infinite holiness, 
The slightest sin is of infinite consequence. The slightest sin is nothing less than cosmic treason when we realize against whom we have sinned. Take that to heart. God is a just God. God is holy. How many times have we done things to our mom and dad at home when we were growing up that we know we weren't supposed to do? And to be honest, I, I, I've asked my brother for forgiveness one time, but we fought over a stupid bike. We did. That's the only time I ever threw punches at him was over that dumb bike. And all I had to do was walk a half a mile. When you're young, that's nothing, right? That is nothing. But I realized I'm still a sinner. Why did I do that? Why? Because I wasn't looking at God as being a holy God. The overall theme and the title of the message today is looking intently at Jesus. Looking intently at Jesus. And we'll have three points this morning that starts out with a phrase to help us in the race. Point number one, to help us in the race, we have the forerunners of our faith as seen in verse one. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. There we have it. We have it right here in scriptures. When we see the word therefore, we have to ask ourselves, why is that therefore there? Well, in this section of Scripture, it actually, in my opinion, starts in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9, and goes up through here. And we know about the witnesses here in, in Hebrews chapter 11. They're all from the Old Testament, are they not? Hebrews 11:1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. And we know about Abel. It talks about Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah. The one that intrigues me about Sarah, when she was told that she was going to have a baby, what did she do? Does anybody remember? She laughed. She, I'm too old. We, we know that phrase, nothing is impossible for God, Right? But that had to take place. So Sarah, in verse 13, all these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. You see, sometimes we have the scripture to look back on the forerunners of our faith, even the New Testament. I love Paul. Paul was against the church. Paul was against the way and look what happened. He was transformed. You know, we have fellow believers with us today in this room or other people that you have met throughout your life who are living today or have passed away. We have those people in our lives. We should, right? They have faith in God and in Jesus Christ. And that's why when we were younger, we looked up to them. We have seen the obstacles that they have faced when they have sinned. And when they have sinned, when they did something really bad or shameful, we looked at them to see how they would handle that. And just like fathers here, when we did something wrong with our kids, they would look at us to see how we handled things. God does the same thing. They have chosen a different way of life because they believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. And each of us can name Maybe one person or a group of people. These witnesses were there to help us. They took us in. Diane and I had an awesome experience in Norfolk, Virginia. Sharon Playwin was the leader of that group. Diane and I just got married. We were young. We had our older son, Shane. We started going to church, and these older people came up, and they took us in. And it wasn't by choice, to be honest with you, if I remember correctly. But they were faithful. You know what? They were real. They were honest. We were going through the Bible verse by verse, word by word. But when somebody was hurting, we talked about it. When somebody was hurting, we prayed for them. 
We cried for them. We love them. And we can look up, and to be honest, if it wasn't for those people, I don't know how many are living today. I know Paul and Sharon and maybe a couple others. But I still think of them every now and then. I really do, because you know what? They're the forerunners of us. Do not forget. In fact, some of you right here today, you realize it or not, you're being a witness to somebody that's a lot younger or even the same age. That's why we got to be careful how we carry our lives out every single day. Now, let's talk about in regards to sin. The phrase, we are to lay every encumbrance in sin that which is so easily entangles us. Encumbrance is like a mass or a bulky material. The only thing I can think of is, has anybody watched Dr. Uh, was it Dr. Pimple? Popper? Well, sometimes you have these masks that are on people, right? Well, that's the first thing I think of when I see mass about this word. It's an encumbrance. It's a, it's a heavy weight, right? And some of those people, man, I don't know how they survived that many years. But it's a heavy weight on them. You see, encumbrances are those things like our desires and wants, which we don't need sometimes, that takes our attention away from God. It can be even our jobs or even our hobbies, which are good. But it's how we deal with them every single day. Sometimes we get torn down by our jobs. What am I doing here? You know what? God's put us there for a reason. Celebrate that. Even like running, right? I, I was in the military and I did running every, almost every single day and I got tired of it. But there was a reason why they told us to be in shape because any little extra weight when we run would slow us down. We wouldn't pass the test. That's what it's like when the weight of sin is on us, right? It tears us down, it brings us down. It separates us from God. And we are to cast off those encumbrances. What are those encumbrances that takes away the things of God? What is that that we have in our life? And the sin that which so easily entangles us. You see, the weight and sin that controls us is easily ensnaring and constricting. How many people have seen a snake crawl around in armor around its prey, right? That's what it's like. Sin, it constricts us. It, it comes to on us. And also, how many people have run through a barbed wire fence when you were a kid? It's hard to escape, right? It hurts, you get cut. That hurts. It's kind of like that sometimes. If you're in it, well, you can't break free because you're keeping your eyes off of Jesus Christ. Sin is obstructing and easily distracting us away from the presence of God, the presence of Jesus, and the working of the Holy Spirit. Sin is an enticer, right? Sin looks good. Sin tastes good. Sin can be pleasurable, but it can, it does take us away from God. You know, what I've seen in society the last so many years, one of the things that tears down the country or tears down the community is what? Destroying the structure of a family. Let's be real, that happens. One thing I loved about Promise Keepers, they would push that. I don't know if they still are today. But you take the father out of the picture, especially a spiritual father out of the picture, what happens? The family structure is broken. And people come in and take over. So I urge everybody here, pray for your spouses, pray together, because sometimes as the head of a family, some of you are, whether you realize it or not, you are a spiritual leader of your family because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Pray for each other. You know, some of us have been married for quite a few years. We know there's something wrong with our spouse, right? Pray for your spouse. Don't get upset. Pray for them. Then talk about it later because there might be something there that they're struggling with that they need to pray or support. Just pray for them. Romans 13, 12. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. You see, light pierces the darkness. Darkness can't overcome the light. 
Ephesians 4.22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt throughout deceitful desires. Colossians 3, 8 through 9. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have been put off the old and old self with his practices. Put them away. Just put them away. That's your older self. Don't let Satan start talking to you, bring that stuff back into your life. Then let us run with endurance with the race that is set before us. When we think of the word run, we're thinking of what? Speed, right? We're thinking of haste. We need to be in a hurry. This is not a slow jog because you know what? Our time on this earth is totally different than God's timing, right? God's forever. We only have so many years on this earth that God allows us to be here. That is why we need to get right with God and have a relationship with Jesus Christ quickly. We know about endurance. It's steady determination and patience, perseverance to keep going regardless of any temptation or unfaithfulness that we have. The race. This is where we get the word agony. Now, who has ever been in the military? You know it's always agony. I know for me because I was a Navy guy. We didn't like running all the time. We try to cut corners. It was always agony if you weren't in shape. It's a struggle to get rid of our sin. It is a fight to get rid of our sin. The weight of sin is a struggle. And we see the words that are set before us. That means something that lies ahead exists openly and exists in an evident manner. So what is it that is set before us if you look in Scripture in verse number 2? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the answer. To help us in the race, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the only answer. You have counselors that help you in the church. You have pastors. You have elders. That is great because there are men and women of faith that can help you. You know what? A lot of times in the United States, I've seen throughout the years, sometimes we have what? People look to the government, look to our president as their savior. But you know what? They fail us at times, do they not? Jesus is our chief shepherd, and he is the head of the church. Like Pastor Frank is the head of this local body but Jesus is the head of the church. You see, when we see the phrase fixing our eyes on Jesus is to look at him intently. Obviously, we can't see him, right? But in our minds, we can focus on Jesus Christ. We are never to keep our eyes off him, ever. Yes, I know it's hard to do. But Jesus should be on our radars. Remember what Jesus said in Scripture? says, you know what? Your family, you know, I'm more important than your family. And I tell you what, that's hard to swallow. You know why? Because I love my family. I love them. But Jesus is more important than our families. Because if you have relations with Jesus, families will come natural. You know, if you are starting to doubt about your faith, or you doubt that you're failing at times to defeat sin and Satan, fix your eyes on Jesus intensely. Because Jesus is the founder and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Jesus is the initiator, originator, founder, and author of our faith. You see, it all goes back to Jesus. Jesus completes our faith. Jesus is the complete, Complete example of our faith. You know why? Because he went to the cross. Jesus was obedient to God. One thing I like, I love about Jesus, not even with a salvation, but he was tempted like you and I. And guess what? He did not sin. He did not sin. And the phrase, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. John 17, verses 4 to 5 reads, 
I glorified you on earth. This is Jesus saying. Having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. John MacArthur says, the prize Christians are to run, to, run for is not heaven. If we are truly Christians, we belong to God by faith in Jesus Christ. Heaven is already ours. We run for the same prize that Jesus ran for, and we achieve it in the same way he did. We run for the joy of exaltation. God's promises will be ours if we glorify him on earth as his son did. Catch that. Jesus is our example. We are to glorify God. He goes on, we glorify God by allowing his attributes to shine through us and by obeying his will in everything that we do. We don't do his attributes, but we allow it to go through us. You see what happens when we have faith in Jesus Christ, when we go out of the world, if we go out of this auditorium right here, we go out into the real world, people should see that we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God in us by our actions. Even if we're fed up with something at work or whatever, they should still see it flow through. And, and for the joy, is, I love this. For Jesus, his joy was at the finished work of redemption, that is salvation on the cross. And his ascension for what? To send the Holy Spirit. Amen to that. Remember, Jesus had to ascend so that the Holy Spirit could come here with us today. Amen to that. We just went through that series. And set before him, it's interesting. This same type of wording occurs in verse 1, referring to the struggle, the race that we have as Christians now, the term is used again of the struggle of Jesus laying his life down for us. Remember, when he was in darkest enemy, what was he doing? He was praying. He was in agony. He knew what was going to happen. And the cross, we know about the cross. Paul says that Jesus bore the curse of Allah for us on the cross. Despising the shame, the cross is the objective evidence of the true love of the Father and of the Son. Jesus looked to the glorious outcome of his humiliation. Do we look forward to humiliation? No, we don't. The cross was not easy. Their price of redemption was not cheap. It cost Jesus everything. We put him on the cross. The world past has put him on the cross. And this is one of my favorite, besides fixing intently on Jesus, this is my favorite part coming up. He sat down, which emphasizes a completed act with abiding results. When we see when, he, when it says, he sat down at the right hand, it is the place of power, of authority, or preeminence. In the throne of God, we cannot in our minds picture what this throne looks like, right? We don't, we have to see something, right? That's how we are made. I went to the Billy Graham Museum in um, Illinois. I can't remember, uh, Wheaton University has a museum in there. And the last part that you go to is you walk in, it's like you're walking on glass. And you got clouds and blue skies everywhere. That's the closest thing that I can imagine of what, what heaven could look like. Now, we see thrones on TV, right? But we don't see the majestic, majestic beauty of God's throne in Jesus, right? It's hard to imagine. God is spiritual, eternal, omnipresent being, far too great for any earthly throne. You see, when God, if he came back down and he tried to sit on the throne, guess what? That ain't going to work. Because our earthly thrones are what? Full of sin, right? Full of hatred. You got countries killing countries. But when you put this together, again, Jesus fixed his eyes to the cross. Remember when Jesus was making his way to Jerusalem on a donkey, he knew his time had come. Because remember he said earlier in the New Testament, it said that his time was not yet, is not ready for him to die yet. Well, when he was going to Jerusalem, he knew exactly what was going to happen. He was fixing his eyes at Calvary and on that cross. 
Jesus is under, still under the authority of God. Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is in his rightful place, the place of power and authority. Jesus is our true king, and he rules as a true sovereign Lord. Think about that. And most importantly, we see here, too, that Jesus is our true priest. Because what does Hebrews talk about a lot? Jesus, and he came after the order of Melchizedek. He is our true priest. What does that mean? Well, besides being a victorious heir, Jesus intercedes for us. Imagine that. The guy, the man, the God man died on the cross for his sins. He intercedes for us. Amen to that. And the other day, in fact, I don't know, two or three days ago, when I was prepping in my devotional from Solid Joys, it says in Hebrews 7.25, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Then I write up about it. it. This says that Christ is able to save to the uttermost forever since he always lives to make intercession for us. In other words, he would not be able to save us forever if he did not go on interceding for us forever. This means our salvation is as secure as Christ's priesthood. Priesthood is indestructible, right? This is why we needed a priest much greater than any human priest. Christ's deity and his resurrection from the dead secure his indestructible indestructible priesthood for us. And then down here, this very day I am being saved by the eternal intercession of Jesus in heaven. Jesus is praying for us and that is essential to our salvation. It's a battle on this earth. You know, sometimes I had a good missionary friend that was up in northern Canada he was a missionary, and I tell you what, he didn't have it good. I mean, for him to take a bath or anything to brush his teeth, he had to go in the lakes up there when it was thawed. Yeah, he loved it. You know, I think Dino's, I'm talking about Jim Holmgren. He's a, I love that guy. He's got the stories, let me tell you. But you know what? He put it that way. He said, you know what? Jesus is our true priest. We have to understand that. He's still working for us today. Anybody can come to him today. And third point, to help us in the race, Jesus took it upon himself. And this and this from this little paragraph from Jeremy Burroughs really hit me. This is what he said. God never showed his hatred of sin so much as he did in Christ. But God sent his son into the world to die for man's sin. He is saying, they shall see the extent to which I hate sin and how I deal with my son. That's a just God. He's talking about a holy God. And I tell you what, I'm so happy for free gift of God's grace. Because you know what? You and I, we we, we can't survive in this world without Jesus Christ. We battle every single day. You see, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins involves shame, suffering. Jesus took on our defiance. He took on our sin and took on our shame. Do you understand that? You know, what was the name of that movie? I can't remember, but it was so grotesque. Passion for Christ. I only can watch it once. I can't watch it again. I'm sorry, I can't. And to be honest, that's how it probably was. That, that image of Jesus and him being whipped and scourged, he did it for you and I. You know what? When I was thinking, you know, he took that treatment for us that we need to live for him and for other believers We need to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Because you know what? Could you or me take the punishment that he did? Think about that. 
I mean, I cut my finger, I took my finger the other day, I had to go to the emergency, or to, to get it fixed. And that hurt. I mean, taking a shower the next day, I had to take the, and that hurt. And that's just a little uh, deep cut. But Jesus loved us so much that he did it for us. Remember that. And last, I'm going to conclude here now. In that last little phrase right there in verse 3. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Weary is becoming tired in spirit. And we know how it feels to lose heart, do we not? We have examples in our lives of we, you know, losing our heart. A death of a loved one or a dear friend, right? We go through that. It's agony. We lose heart. We grow weary for a, for a period of time. So we understand that. But you know what? Living the Christian faith, battling sin, it's not easy. But we can do it because we have Jesus. We have Jesus Christ who sacrificed everything. And he still intercedes for us. To me, that's one of the best things I can read in the Bible is that he still intercedes for us. Again, I'm glad for the free gift of grace. And I come up with some just very short little ideas to help us to not to lose focus on Jesus Christ, right? First one, as I conclude, have Jesus always on our minds, right, in our hearts. I know that's hard to do. Come up with a way. Like I do when I get in that, that snare or in that trap, I turn worship music on. Sometimes I'll, I'll turn on Christian music on, or sometimes I'll go back to the old hymns when I'm in a real rut, right? This old rugged cross, wow. It's one of my favorites. Or great is thy faithfulness. Be in prayer without ceasing. Paul tells us that, right? Reading the Bible every, every day, and most importantly, as we are together, as we are a fellowship of believers, Come to church on Sundays. I know sometimes we can't. Things happen. Belong to a small group. Believe me, it helps. And be available to help somebody that's going through struggles, right? That's why we're there for each other. Because you know what? To be honest, when you help somebody, it grows your faith. It doesn't put your hand on the chest like, Lord, I did. But it, it feels like, for me, it's securing my faith that I know what I can do through the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus did for me. In Ephesians 6, 12 to 17, it talks about put the armor of God every single day. We forget that. I do. In fact, I even wrote a prayer for that as part of my prayer in the morning to put on the armor of God and repent and confess your sins to God. Do it. The Bible tells us that we need to do that. And be obedient to God. In the Old Testament, there's a fallback that I go to, Psalm 51, where David had an affair with Bathsheba, right? That was a bad act. But you know what? There's gospel in that passage. He washes us clean. Understand? We are washed clean. Because I don't know about you, when the Holy Spirit convicts me of something I did, I feel dirty. Don't we sometimes? Like, why did I do that? I just put my foot in my mouth for no reason. <laughs> Looking intently at Jesus will help. Never take your focus off Jesus. If you get put in a situation, back away. Focus on Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we do give you thanks that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on his sins. Jesus, thank you for taking that upon yourself. God, thank you. We praise you for that. The Holy Spirit, we, with each of us this morning, as we go out of here, that when we find struggles, that we would come to Jesus. Work in us, Holy Spirit, each of us. Holy Spirit, continue to work in our lives. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that if there's anybody here that needs 
to talk to somebody or to have come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, work on them now. Life is too short. You know that, God. Father, I pray for protection over everybody, including myself, from the evil one. I pray that every day that we would put on the armor of God and, get, and just stop the darts from Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it, right? We're good? <laughs> hey, let's give it up for Terry. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Love you. So it's great reminders. Um, I tell you that, that Hebrews uh, 12, 3 uh, really, really uh, spoke to me. Um, and we, I was just talking to Suzanne about it. She wrote it down. It's something I'm going to meditate on a little bit more uh, this week. But so many great uh, nuggets of truth in there. Um, well, I, I want to make sure you understand a couple of things um, that we need to be reminded of. Number one is um, we need help with Mission Christmas. So um, Mission Christmas is just right out here, and uh, you can choose an ornament and uh, choose a child. It's a $100 gift, and you can put that in the, uh, in the box out there, or you can go online uh, to, uh, um, you know, to to you know register or to, to help but there's also a um, there's also a volunteer card that you can fill out out there and you put that in the offering box as well out there or this offering box put in one of the boxes you're good and um, but we would love for you to uh, be a part of that it's going to be a great event um, just an opportunity for us to reach a community and this is our year number three and we partner with Lake Point uh, Station and uh, San Angelo's Pizza, and Walmart, and Ackworth, and lots of people. So it's a, it's an awesome event. So you don't want to you don't want to miss that. That's going to be December tenth. That's in a couple of weeks. Uh, ladies, also don't forget uh, your event. That's going to be next Sunday, Sunday night. And um, and then also uh, we do have uh, big gives um, that that are happening. And so uh, we have a um, another big give coming up in in December. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, of those uh, big gifts. So lots of opportunities for us to give. Um, and I do have to say that we need to break down, but we only need to do that a couple more weeks and then we got a couple more weeks break, you know, because of Christmas break. But uh, just have an opportunity to visit, uh, shake hands, hugs, and, um, and before we uh, break down our chairs and, and put them away. Uh, but you don't want to miss next week because next week we start Christmas and Christmas music. Yes, absolutely. We can do that. So, hey, we love you guys, and we'll talk to you later. See you all next week. Bye-bye.